Hello guys, how are you? Hello, Stefano. <laughs> thank you, thank you for joining me. Um, I'm here with our two Colombian local insiders and we're going to talk a lot about our Colombian Andes itinerary. I'm very excited to hear a bit more about Colombia as a destination and how our itinerary is probably one of the best ones out there. Cool. So why don't, why don't we start just introducing yourselves? Maybe you can talk a little bit more about yourselves um, so that our customers can understand a little bit more about you. And Helica, do you want to go first? Um, oh. My name is Linda. Uh, I'm from Bogota, the city of Colombia, the big capital city of Colombia. I am very excited to be sharing with you my love for my country, for my people, for Colombians. And I want that everybody comes and visit my country once in their lives at least, so that they can also experience the love that I feel for it. Amazing. So this is me, guys. Hello, uh, my name is Angelica. I'm also from Bogota. I've been doing this, uh, I mean, I've been joining travelers throughout Colombia for about three years, roughly. And I really enjoy it because I know lots of people come to Colombia, either not knowing too much about how different it can be inside Colombia. Yeah. Or, or basically not knowing at all what Colombia is. So it's very exciting and very fun to, to show them around and let them discover with me what there is to see here. Amazing. I sh I'm sure that you guys do an amazing job on the ground. Um, and yeah, let's talk about Colombia because I think Colombia is such an, a special place, isn't it? It's like so diverse, as you said, Angelica. Um, do you guys want to talk a little bit more about, you know, about the Colombia as, as, as a general, like a, a country in South America for, for us? Well, I think that one of the... I've been thinking a lot about that question and I realized that one of the things that make Col makes Colombia so special is that we are basically a mixture of different lands, right? Yeah. So as we are in the corner of South America, we share with the Andean, you know, with Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, we share with them all the Andean life and culture, mm -hmm. but then we share well, the Caribbean life and culture with, uh, I don't know, places like Venezuela, Costa Rica, Panama. Yeah. And we also have this um, big share of the Amazonia that we share with Peru and Brazil. So I think it's cool because it's a mix of very different regions. Even there are places when I, as a Colombian, I feel like outside my, yeah. my regular, right? I bet. So I think that's what's very interesting about this. Place. That's super cool. So basically, Colombia, it's the whole continent in a nutshell, isn't it? You have a little bit of the Amazon, a little bit of the Andes, a little bit of the Caribbean. You have both both oceans, don't you? You have coasts on the Pacific, on the Atlantic. So basically, you have a little bit of everything. So probably one of the best I, places to go to. Mm -hmm. I That's would also add to what Angelica said that culturally we are very diverse, mm -hmm. like she mentioned, yeah. but also geographically, as you are mentioning, we are very diverse. And that also has um, affected somehow the life of people. So when you come to Bogota, you're going to find a very different landscape yeah. than when you go to uh, the coffee region. Sure. And not only the landscape, the mountains change, the weather also changes. And that is something that I love of Colombia. And it is that you don't have really seasons here. So you don't have to wait eight months yeah. to see summer. You just drive an hour away from Bogota and you find summer already. That's amazing. So that also has uh, made or shaped our cultures. Sure. Uh, our geography is very diverse and the weather is also very diverse. That is something that I love of Colombia too. So basically you choose the season you want and then just, just drive towards it. That's really cool. <laughs> amazing. That's it, yes. That's it. So why don't we start talking about our amazing itinerary? Um, we've got two, how do you say a person from Bogota is Bogotanians? No. Bogotanos. Bogotanos. Yeah. We have two Bogotanos here. So should we Bogotanas, Bogotanas but, of but course. But we have two two terms yeah. to describe the people from Bogota. Okay. So Rolas 
I am a Rola, which is a Bogotanian, but the family is not from Bogota. Ah, okay. And that happens a lot because it's yeah. a big city, so that receives a lot of people from different regions of Colombia. Sure. So the most diverse, I would say, city in the most diverse country is Bogota. I'm That's sure. my perception of, of our city. And then there are Cachacas. I don't know if Angelica is a Cachaca, which are people from Bogota, which family are also from Bogota. Uh, is that your case, Angelica? So you have <laughs> yes, both. my grandparents are from here. Amazing. So I, I would like to start with that, like Bogota, which is the first stop in our itinerary, yeah. is the biggest city. It's uh, huge. It's immense. You have more than 8 million people living in our city. And it's one of the biggest at altitude. Mm -hmm. uh, we are 2,600 meters closer to the stars. Wow. That's how we see our city. So <laughs> when you so come high. to Bogota, and you come from sea level, for example, you need to take it easy, yes. take your time to relax, drink plenty of water, because we are closer to the stars here. I love my city. It's very diverse. It is super packed. Most of the days, there are many people in the city. It's, it's the capital. Yeah. But it's a place where you find pretty much every region of Colombia in terms of people, food, uh, plants, activities. So yes, that's that's what I like about my city. And Angelica can share with you a little bit more about the itinerary itself, because we have like an introduction to Colombia yes. in, in Bogota. Great. Let's hear it. OK. So about this itinerary that we're doing uh, with Culture Trip, I think it's a very nice both historical as well as geographical introduction to what Colombian life is. Yeah. Um, so the Andes, the Andes itinerary. Uh, well, I'm from the Andes, of course, so I really like it. And um, as Linda was saying, all we have to do in Colombia to go find summer is just to drive a little bit and then we get yeah. it, right? So my whole life I grew up going on vacation to these kind of places that we visit, right? Yeah. And not only because they are warmer places where you can already find like nicer weather and pools, but also because of their historical meaning. Yeah. So, you know, this, well, after Bogota, this first day out is on our way to Onda, mm -hmm. which is a very beautiful town. Yeah. Uh, it's got an importance, incredible importance for Colombian history in terms of the development of the economics of, of Colombia. Mm -hmm. uh, so because the, that was such a rich town in colonial times, uh, they have this amazing architecture. Nice. Uh, it's just so nice to walk around that place. It's so beautiful. Also, it's very, it's very quiet in that sense. You, yeah. you don't have to bother with cars. It's not a city anymore. It's, it's nice. a tinier town. Uh, but before getting there, we stopped by this activity on the river, which also allows us to understand the importance of, of the of the changing of the altitudes and the yeah. geographies of Colombia. And well, this we do this rafting activity. Nice. And I think it's very fun. Well, it's very fun. And it's also something we share. Uh, I mean, it's it's an activity. A lot of local people from Bogota go to there on a weekend yeah um, because it's so accessible so it's know? a very local so experience in that respect to go to a place um where basically colombians do go for the weekend which i think is quite nice isn't it most people usually fly from bogota to medellin direct and correct me if i'm wrong but like what we're doing is we're driving um from one cordillera to another cordillera um overland witnessing all this changing that you're describing me on the landscape, on the vegetation, waterfalls becoming huge rivers. So that must be a really, really, really cool thing to do. Yeah, and you really, exactly. you really get into the skin of a Colombian because yeah. like Angelica was saying, we are used to driving a lot in Colombia. Yeah. Like most of the families in Bogota would take their car, go to the nearest warmer town because Bogota is, is colder than surrounding towns yeah. and then enjoy with your family 
a plan like going to the river or nice. like uh, walking in in uh, in the rural areas <laughs> so i think this itinerary is very special because you really get into the skin of an average colombian by driving and yeah. by seeing these changes like you are saying stefano in the um, in the weather and in the altitude so in bogota we are high and then we go down down to onda i don't remember angelica how high onda is but it's onda is by the river magdalena which is our mississippi river basically uh, -huh. uh it's it's a, it's at that level so it's nice. warm it's it's humid and then you see all of that in the same day That's you just beautiful. go by car and and you experience that difference in the same day so that is something that i really encourage people to do because otherwise you wouldn't feel really what a colombian would do or or would experience in their average life that's fantastic. So we go from 2,700 meters high to the on, on top of the Andes, down to the Madalena River Basin. Um, we do see a lot of things on the way, do rafting. Um, and after that, what do we do? Do we go up again? Well, we, we finish that day in Onda. Yeah. And we get ready to cross the Andes the next day. Right. And um, well, another nice thing about crossing the Andes, and it was something that well, when we did this trip with passengers, yeah. it was surprising. It was the fact that we have to go very high. Yeah. There's this place where it's fog, it's very foggy. Uh, you get to see how even the agriculture changes because you cannot cul cool. cultivate the same things here. Yeah, that's there. true. Uh, I don't know if you, if you know that Colombians are passionate for cyclism, for cycling. No, I didn't. Well, so you see lots of cycling people oh, yeah. and all the time people is wondering like, well, are they crazy you know, <laughs> they're climbing this mountain on this weather? Yeah. And then on the same day, you go back down to this place that it's again warm. Nice. And that, that could be confusing when you're not from Colombia. Like, how could this have changed so much? So you always have yeah. to have like a coat and some like flip flops Lengers. and everything <laughs> on your backpack. So basically, so we go up again and then we go down and then we are in another valley where I think we stay in a very nice um, accommodation. Right, Linda? Do you want to talk about it? That's true, Stefano. Before, before I, I jump into that, yeah? what Angelica was mentioning is very special because recently we had uh, two cyclists that won the Italy Tour, the Tour of France, oh, wow. which are... Edgar Bernal, Nairo Quintana, if we have any cyclist viewers, they must know of what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that part that you go from Onda all the way up to the fog, to the very cold again mountain, that is one of the most looked after route for cyclism internationally. Okay. Because it's very demanding. Like yeah. the ascent, the ascent is very, it's very steep for them and it's very long. So that is one very special route, and you cannot see that by flying. You cannot see how how yeah. demanding that can be for a cyclist to go from 200 in Onda up to the fog. I don't know, it must be like 3,000. We reach there, I, Angelica, I like is, more than 3,000, right? Wow, I can only imagine. So imagine that. <laughs> That is super demanding for your lungs, of course, if you are cycling. Yeah. And yes, you, you can only see that if you travel by car. You sure. cannot see that if you fly. And then, as you mentioned, Estefano, we arrive uh, to a very special hotel in the coffee region of Colombia. Coffee Many region. people know about my country for coffee. Yeah. And then it's the opportunity to um, understand and explore this culture in Colombia, in the coffee region. So Colombia is a great producer of coffee. We are among the countries that export the best coffee in the world. You will know more about coffee in our itinerary. Yeah. Um, but we are not great consumers of coffee. And that is a paradox <laughs> because we export very good coffee. But, you don't but the coffee we consume locally in Colombia is with a lot of sugar many right. times. Okay. Uh, so, so it's a very special paradox because all the coffee culture in Colombia is not necessarily about coffee drinking, but about coffee growing. Right. So, for example, here we have coffee uh, beauty, beauty contests. 
in the coffee region in, in January, there is a beauty contest where, where the women come and talk about coffee and they show their knowledge of coffee. Wow. Uh, we have soap operas about coffee recently. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the name because it's very cheesy. It's called Coffee with the Aroma. The oh, I coffee. think I heard of it. That I is think the I name heard of, it. of that soap opera. As you can imagine, it's a, <laughs> it's a drama of a family of coffee growers. Oh, my and God. And they have uh, this coffee picker that is very special, pretty beautiful. It's a great story. You can, you can find it on Netflix. I I'm think. certainly looking so for it. All the coffee culture in Colombia is about coffee production. It's okay. about how this industry has really helped our country yeah. in this very special geography. Because in Colombia, we grow coffee in a steep mountains. Yeah. When you go to Brazil or to other regions, True. you grow coffee in, in flatlands. flatlands yeah. And there are a lot of machines, for mm -hmm. example, that help picking the coffee because the geography is easy for using machines. Yeah. But Colombia, no. In Colombia, people adapted to the geography okay. that is steep and mountainous. So you see these steep coffee crops by car. If you go by car, of course, you can see that. And then you are like, how these people pick the coffee yeah. in this steep mountains that is very very special in the coffee region of colombia it must be beautiful but i i, I am not talking about the hotel i'm gonna give a coffee <laughs> to hotel to talk because i love coffee yeah, but yeah, yes our good. hotel in the coffee region is wow I'm, I'm forgettable. And we do visit a farm, right? We do taste coffee we learn about it um we're gonna go for a hike in the cocora valley yeah that's the next day. so so we get to after, you know, after seeing this whole cycling stuff and crossing the mountain, we get to the coffee region, which is in the central Cordillera. Yes. And we stay in this very amazing hotel in the middle of the nature. Mm, nice. And it's such a great experience because we spend a whole day, you know, crossing the, the Andes. And you get to this place that it's just a place where you don't want to leave, yeah. right? So <laughs> it's, it's every single room uh, is surrounded by nature. Beautiful. And you could just wake up with the sound and lights of the nature. Oh, amazing. And then the coffee region is a special place in Colombia for bird watching. Okay. So anyone who's interested in bird watching yeah. is going to have the time of its life over there nice. uh, because you don't even need to make an effort. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't, you don't need binoculars. They, they just show up on br at breakfast table. Uh, that's <laughs> nice. That's really yes, nice. Yes, they are everywhere. And so from the minute you get there, you know, it's going to be amazing, right? That look, and, sounds awesome. Because every room is surrounded by nature, then it's very private, it's very uh, calm, and it's just very beautiful. They have a path, well, they have two paths that you can walk in the morning or during the day. We yeah. did them in the morning because of the bird watching, we sure. know it's better. Time early. is important, yeah. Yes, and so they are very easy paths, which I found it was very cool because maybe you don't want to walk too much before we go to do the Kokora Valley. Yeah. It's still good. You know, it's still fine. You can do it. And you get to cross a little bit of what we call Guaduales, which mm -hmm. is like our bamboo, native bamboo forest. Okay. And, and there's a stream of water there. There is this tropical, we call this the tropical Andean forest, which is not like an Amazonian forest. It's yeah. more like a middle altitude forest. Yeah. And just all in one single one and a half hour wow. walk. So diverse. That is not very demanding. Again. And that's the Bio Habitat so Hotel. Is that the, yeah. That is the Bio Habitat Hotel. Uh, they have an amazing view of the valley, like the city that's uh, on the horizon yeah. there. And at night it is very quiet too. So it's perfect for resting after the next day that it's a long walking day. You know, we do the Kokora Valley. We yeah. go to the coffee farm, we visit Italian. Sounds perfect. I really want that people see pictures of this place because, wow, 
it's and <laughs> and and another thing that is very special is all their sustainability focus. Yeah. So this hotel has took sustainability to another level oh, awesome. and they really have tried to integrate nature with the construction itself. Okay. So they have like different types of rooms. They call some of, some of these rooms the nests oh, and it wow. has so with the, the birds, what, what Angelica was saying. Nice. Like, so they have these rooms called the nests and they have other types of rooms, but they are very focused on making this a very sustainable place and they have actually the sustainability paths where they explain to people how they manage to be a, a more sustainable hotel and it's it makes it even more beautiful like that focus that they have on weather preservation um, nature preservation they wanted to bring back birds to that area great and this is this is something also in colombia we are the most diverse uh, country in birds in the world oh really um yes so that's a very special place for us to stay so amazing place sustainable helping conservation and the the best place to be after a long day of of touring and driving so then we're gonna be recharged after staying there and I think then we drive towards our last stop which is Medellin yes. yeah and Medellin is also yes. a very interesting is, place isn't it that is a very interesting um, road day mm -hmm. because well we leave early that morning from bio habitat and we go next to a orchids farm okay and well, is this place of an old man? He told me he's been collecting uh, orchids from 50 years already. And it's one of the greatest, I mean, it is the greatest collection of orchids <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. Okay. And I was mesmerized by it. Wow. Um, I love orchids. Because it's so weird to find in one single place all that yeah. varieties of orchids. In the middle also, of Also, he's got an amazing bonsai mm -hmm. um, collection. Okay. I mean, I was just so happy. And I think uh, uh, people who were traveling with me, they were also surprised to, mm -hmm. to find out Fun. that you could have orchids the size of smaller than a fingernail wow and then orchids cool. that are very big yeah different colors different texture that was, it's an amazing stop nice and then after the orchid farm we get to medellin and then after the orchid farm we get to medellin which is and a place that changed a lot in the last have... few years no sorry it's a city that changed a lot in the last few years yeah, it's a city that has completely transformed. Mm, um, more, you know, yeah. it passed from being many, many years ago, one of the most dangerous cities in the world, actually. Yeah. The most dangerous. The America. most. <laughs> the most. <laughs> it was the most dangerous city in the 90s in the world. And you visit the most dangerous neighborhood in the most dangerous city in the 90s used to yeah <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which Very i think impressive. which is all about the story of pablo escobar a lot of people must have, may have seen in the netflix series narcos right that's very interesting. And we're going to learn a lot about the true story about what happened and everything in, in our tour. Yeah, you know, one, one of the things that's important to let people understand is that in Colombia, there is this before and after Pablo Escobar. Yeah. And if that is for Colombian uh, in general, for Colombians in general, well, imagine how it was in Medellin, right? True. So it's interesting to see. I always tell people that if I had to choose another place to live in Colombia, it would definitely and only be Medellin. Okay. It's an amazing city that has invested a lot, a lot of resources. And I'm not talking only about money, but also, you know, people into creating a, a lot of, um, how would you say this, into making it easy for newer generations yeah. to profit from culture, nice. science. They build buildings that are open to the public. They build places where you want to be. And they have this amazing weather also. Mm -hmm. So it has transformed uh, the life of Medellin. 
Medellinenses, we don't call them Medellinenses, we call them Paisas. Paisas. And, um, and it's an amazing place to finish yeah. the trip. Yeah. Because it's also, actually, sometimes it, it breaks my heart, but people say, oh, I wish I had spent more days in Medellin. <laughs> um, Bogota, it's beautiful, but I wish I had spent more days in Medellin. Uh, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Don't take it to person. <laughs> I really love Bogota. But I also understand what they mean, you know? Of it's course. It's a nice place to be around. Yeah, and the good thing about starting and ending in Bogota and Medellin is that our customers can always stay longer if they feel like they can do a, like more days in each site um, so they can take even more time in each city. I think that's that's quite nice. So basically, we go to the Colombia's two biggest cities. We cross the Andes from one to the other. We see both sides of the Cordillera. We see the biggest river in all Colombia. We see the Zona Cafetera. We stay in a fantastic sustainable hotel, which is the best place to recharge your batteries. And happy days. That sounds amazing. And the most important thing is they're going to be accompanied by the two greatest local insiders from Colombia. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for this conversation. I think it was really, really nice. Uh, it would really help to bring things to life a little bit more for everyone hearing us. See, come to Colombia and visit us and travel with us here. Amazing. Yeah, definitely. It's fun. You're going to have fun. You're going to discover a very distinct place you know like it's all in one place super so you have to thank you guys good to see you thank bye you, bye